Welcome back to the Uncharted the Board Game tutorial. Now that I've shown you what comes in the box, how to set up the board, and how to start off the game, I'm going to show you how to play the game. I'm going to start off by telling you how to win the game. To win the game, the game must end. One of the ways that the game can end is when one of the decks you see in front of you run out. When the adventure deck, the action deck, or the special action deck run out of cards, the game will end at the end of that round. During the game, players will take on the roles of Uncharted characters. If at the end of any round there is only one surviving player, that player wins the game. Also, if at the end of a round there are no surviving players, the game ends in a draw for all players. Throughout the game, players will earn victory points by discovering treasure and defeating enemies. At the end of a round, where one of the three decks runs out, the surviving player with the most victory points will win the game. The game consists of several rounds of play. Each round consists of a recovery phase, an action phase, and a damage phase. At the end of each round, you will check if an end condition has been met. Those end conditions are one of the three decks running out, or there is one or less surviving players. If that condition has been met, you will determine the winner of the game. If it hasn't, you'll begin a new round of play. The first phase in the round is the recovery phase. During the recovery phase, each player stands all resting cards in his or her play area. A resting card is a card that is sideways. A standing card is a card that is upright. So to stand your cards, you will turn them upright. Each player will turn all of their resting cards upright, thus standing them. After the recovery phase, the action phase will occur. Beginning with the starting player, who will have the starting player marker, and proceeding clockwise, players take turns performing two actions at a time. When it is your turn, perform two of the following actions once each or one of them twice. During the action phase, you will be able to perform one of several actions. One of those actions is use one card in your in play area. To use a card in your play area, simply rest it and apply its effect. Another action that can be performed during the action phase is to play a card from your hand. To play a card from your hand, you must pay its cost, which is found in the top left corner. Then you may put it in your in play area. Some cards will have a cost of zero, while others can have a very high cost such as five. To pay the cost, you must take that many cards from your hand and discard them. This card has a cost of zero, so you may essentially play it for free by simply placing it in your in play area. This card, however, has a cost of two. So to play this card, you would have to take two cards from your hand and move them to your discard area. Then you may take that card and put it into your play area. Another action that you can perform during the action phase is to use the special effect of a blue, yellow, or green card. Each color will have its own unique effect, and you may use it by simply taking the card and moving to the discard area. The effects for each color can be found on the game board in the game flow area or in the rule book. Another action that can be performed during the action phase is to attack an enemy. Enemies are found in the adventure card area and look like this. They have a victory point value, a health value, and an attack point value. In order to defeat an enemy, you must have attack power equal to or greater than its health, which is found here. Generally, you'll get attack power by using your red weapon cards. The way you get attack power is by resting your weapon cards. When this card is rested, you'll gain 2 attack power. When this card is rested, you'll gain 3 attack power. When you rest both, you'll get 5. 5 attack power will be enough to defeat this enemy, since he has 5 health.
When you defeat an enemy, you'll move it to the discard area and gain victory points equal to the designated number in the bottom right corner found here. That's how many spaces you'll move your victory point marker. Additionally, when you defeat an enemy, you'll get to draw one card from the special action deck. The last action that can be performed during the action phase is called a pass. Usually a pass is performed when no other actions are available to a player. Once a player performs a pass, he will not be able to play any other actions for the remainder of the round. When a player passes, if he is not the last player to have passed, he will get to perform one of two special actions. Those are placing a search marker in the adventure card area or drawing one card from the action deck. The last player to pass in a round will receive the starting player marker for the next round. After all players have performed the pass in the action phase, the damage phase will begin. During the damage phase, enemies attack each player to deal damage, but it is possible to defend against their attacks. First, we look at how many enemies are in the adventure card area. In this case, we have two enemies. Each enemy has one attack power. We will combine those attack powers for two total attack power. Now each player will receive two damage from that attack. However, each player will be able to rest any of their standing action cards to prevent one damage. In this case, Nathan Drake has no standing cards, so he will not be able to prevent any of the damage and will take two damage, like so. However, if Nathan had one standing card, he could rest it to prevent one of that damage, and that would result in only taking one damage. If he had two standing cards, he could rest both standing cards and thus prevent all the damage. After each player has received the damage or prevented some of it, the round will end and a new round will begin. The round will then begin with the player that now has the new starting marker. Now that I've shown you how a round of play works, I'm going to explain how searching works. Each player starts the game with six search markers. There are effects in the game such as this one that would allow you to place a search marker on a treasure card in the adventure card area. Here are two examples of treasure cards. A treasure card has a victory point value in the bottom right corner, has an effect in the center, and has a search mark requirement in the top left corner. When a treasure card has search markers on it equal to its search marker requirements, which are found in the top left corner, it will be discovered. The player with the most search markers on that card will earn the victory point shown in the bottom right corner and apply its effect if it has one. It is possible for a treasure card to have markers for multiple players when it is discovered. In that case, when it is discovered, the player with the most search markers on it will earn the victory points shown in the bottom right corner. However, all players that have a search marker on the card will apply the effect, if any. When a treasure is discovered, if multiple players have the most search markers on that card, each of those players will get the victory points in the bottom right corner, as well as the effect, if any. Once the treasure's search requirements are met, you apply the victory points as well as the effect. You will then take the search markers and return them to their players. You will take the treasure card, move it to the discard area, and then replace it with a new card from the adventure deck. Before we end this tutorial, I want to talk about the three most common symbols found in the game. Here we have the search marker symbol. When you see this symbol followed by a number, when you use this effect, you will place that many search markers on treasures in the adventure card area. This is the attack power symbol. When you rest this card, you will add that much attack power to your character. This is the card draw symbol. When you rest this card, you will draw the designated number of cards from the action deck. 